Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase and review we're going to be looking at the 1990 Decepticon MicroMaster Combiners, the Battle Squad. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to have a quick look at them in all of their modes and then combined. I'm going to show you the differences between how they were released by Hasbro and how they were released by Takara in Japan. And it is quite interesting. You can see for a start that they don't have all six members. And funnily enough, this was released a full year later. We're going to do some comparisons with the older versions and indeed the newer versions that have been released of these. And as I'm lucky enough to have a couple of different types of packaging, we can have a look at the artwork and the lovely battle scenes on the back of that. So it might get a little confusing because in, as I say, 1990, as part of the Hasbro continuity of Generation 1 figures, this was released. So this was known as a MicroMaster Combiner. There were uh, four in total, two Decepticons and two Autobots. And the Decepticon ones, one of these was, of course, the Battle Squad. You can see there we've got the Jet, which is made up of two people. I'll go through the names in a second. We've got the anti-aircraft base and we've got the cannon transport. This so happens to be the Spanish version. As you can see, the language is all in Spanish. There's the two team members uh, from each of them the artwork on them is brilliant and you've got a little i suppose description there showing you what you can and can't do because you can of course combine and mix them all up together so you've got in fact there you go there's your people so we've got meltdown and half track which are meltdown Ooh, meltdown is there there is half track then we've got direct hit and power punch then we've got fire shot and vanquish and again you can see this in more detail on the back and again the little transformation processes which i'm going to be showing you in a second we've got a combined tech spec there and there again we've got some pictures of all of the way that you can combine them now there's no unfortunately any battle scenes on the back of that it's just obviously the transformation purposes whereas if we look at this particular box this is how they released them in japan i'm pretty sure that the mt stood for micromaster transport number nine and this should have had this little box one of these inside this one says number four on this has got to be one of the most strangest purpose purchases i've ever made because when you open up this these guys in here are completely sealed on the card still and the previous owner has literally just cut out the um i suppose yeah the little transport there uh, the little transport is very interesting to be fair and i'll show you that in a second we'll keep looking at the box though we've got some lovely artwork there it's completely different and you can see here the way they're firing out of the transport that is pretty much because that's exactly what does happen it also says here that they combine to form large vehicles which is what they do and what you've got at the top, this is the Return of Convoy, I suppose, artwork. And indeed, it says it right there. Now, Return of Convoy was a Japanese exclusive toy line released again in Japan in 1991. And if we spin it around to the back, there is the artwork for that. That is, of course, he's known as Convoy in Japan. Of course, he was known as Optimus Prime everywhere else. Uh, you've got Sky Gary there. I think we've got Grandis six liner and yeah this is pretty much the majority of the toy line released in that particular year and again we've got lovely actual product images of the micromasters with grandis and of course in their little troop transports right one last thing to show you with regards to this box the top corner it says c369 the c stood for cybertrons which is autobots and its reference number was 369 Right then, I think we better have a look at, in honesty, some of the vehicles so I can show you how the little transport actually worked. So what we're going to do then, we'll start off with the ones that unfortunately they never made it into the Japanese one, which is strange because they didn't make it into the Japanese ones. And these are, I suppose, funnily enough, they were the leader. Well, the one of them is Direct Hit was the leader um of this whole team so here is direct hit he is the front of the um of the cannon transport yeah there we go because the cannons on the other one so if we look at him very very basic nice little bit of detail on the head sculpt only articulation is really the arms you wouldn't class that as legs or waist articulation it is just solely for transformation purposes so if we fold this over like so line everything up oh just bring the legs and torso down I'm trying to look there we go it does line up these have just sat on a shelf for years untransformed so let's have a look at the back part so this is now of course uh, power punch and again nice bit of detail on him and let's see if we can transform this carefully that's just going to fold oh there's the focus back into itself 
and I'm going to line up what are the arms. Sorry that the focus keeps coming and going. And what you've got here, you can see you've got a dowel and a hole and you would line these up Ooh, once I've pushed the head in and secure them together. Before I do that, though, I want to show you this. This is the little transport pods inside here. There's actually a little launcher. If I push it back, you'll hear that it's clicked in. And if I press this button on the front, you can see that it shoots forward. And this is what they did with a lot of their toys in Japan. They just made them, I suppose the only way I can describe it is a bit more fun, a bit more playability, more things to do. And again, you can see they didn't have much uh, safety testing with their springs. They were really powerful on all of their launches. Um, and yeah, that's still on carpet and it still launches it out really well. So I just, again, love the idea of the fact that they did that. Right, let's combine this guy together then. So he's going to go like so. This is, of course, the cannon. This is what's most commonly lost on this particular piece. I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, be aware if you have to some for yourselves, the corrosion in the wheels, that happens a lot. Um, and indeed in the screws, as these are showing some signs of corrosion there as well. Right, let's leave them alone. Let's go on to the anti-aircraft vehicle, which is Meltdown and Half Track. So Meltdown's the front. Here he is. Nice bit of detail on the orange face. This one's got even less articulation. You can't move out the arms. Um, and there's the back. It's just a simple case of folding these over like so. Again, you've got the same two parts there. And we'll do the same with the back. And there he is. The back is half track. This one's got articulation in the arms, but again, nothing much else. So let's have a go. I can't even remember doing this, to be honest, ever. So everybody can have a quick laugh at me now as I fail to transform a MicroMaster. I've just knocked that out the back. Right, let's bring this up. Turning it round. Ah, now what am I doing? I am going to have to turn the arms all the way around. That's it. Totally stuck in this. There we go. Turn the arms around and condense this back over itself. We got there in the end. There we go to the back. This is good as well. This has got full rotation. And of course, these are very commonly missing from it. Now, quickly before I put these two together, this is what I was on about earlier. We can in fact separate these and you can mix and match any of them. So that works and this works. It even works in a second. I'll show you with a jet. Doesn't look as good, obviously, but it, it will work. All right, let's separate these very carefully. Again, apologies for this and how long it's taking, but you can tell that these have pretty much probably never been played with. I'm just glad that as I'm separating them, the tabs are staying intact and aren't actually snapping off. So there we go. That's that. That looks about right to me. And the final ones then, so we've got the Blackbird Jet, we've got Fire Shot and Vanquish. So Fire Shot is at the front. There we go. Again, bit of paint on his head. Um, let's take the arms, fold them back, fold them back because that's going to be the wheels and the landing gear. And then we've got to again collapse these over themselves like so. That will just sit there and the head will then collapse back into the back like so. Here's the back of the jet. Again, not much you can do here. You can actually move the arms. The arms, <laughs> I was just about to say, be aware of that. This, however, though, is much better than the Headmasters. The Headmasters ones, when they come off, they literally just snap off. These, as you can see, you're quite fortunate that you can just click them back on. So I don't have any luck at all, do I? Right, let's fold the wings out. And this, again, this is going to fold underneath itself, like so. So nice and careful. Do I need to move the arms out the way? I'm going to move the arms out the way just in case for now. I'm going to move them all the way here. I'm going to fold this back on itself. And then I'm going to try and work out in honesty how to get them in there without this getting caught. They do need to be there. It just needs to fold over it nice and carefully. Yeah, I need to put these arms there. And I need to hold them down nice, nice and securely without damaging or breaking them, fold the back of the wings down and clip these in. So there is your large Blackbird jet, which is brilliant. That looks so, so good. A brilliant idea, really impressed with these. I just think they were so, so clever. Um, with regards to the new ones, I've not actually opened these yet, but you can see 
just where their homage has come from. The color scheme is pretty much exactly the same. Um, and they're just bigger, aren't they? Let's have a quick look at these while they're there. Fold these out. And I'm never going to get this head out with no nails. Oh, I am. There we go. So the only thing that's mainly different is they've done, they've made much more detail, pay more attention, as you'd expect, to the head sculpt, to the arms, to the articulation. And it's just nice to get newer versions of these. But there you go, guys. Hopefully you found this interesting. I hope it brought back a lot of nice memories for you. I know that some of the MicroMaster sets uh, were hit and miss with a lot of the fans, but I'm sure you'll agree that there's a lot of playability to be had with them. And they're just overall, I think, fun. The fact that you can combine them, mix them, match them. They're their own little transformers in their own right. And of course, you can play with them as part of bases as well. But there you go. So this was the Generation 1 Battle Squad. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Like and comment, and don't forget to subscribe.